Howdy y'all. This is another quick, quick, or quick-ish tip rather. Courtesy of the one and only Adventure Link. That's me. And in today's quick tip, we're going to go over the flood clear mode on your fuel injected vehicle. Now just as a fair warning and to get this off the bat right now, what flooded means is an excessive amount of fuel dumped into the engine. If this is the other kind of flooded, that involves, you know, high waters after a gigantic rainstorm, this video won't help you. But another one of my favorite YouTube guys, Scotty Kilmer, has a video with some tips on how you can resolve that situation should it happen to you. But as a fair warning again, if that does happen to you, do not try to start the car, let alone drive in the flood. Not only can you be swept away, but you can also risk major engine damage. Remember, safety, structural integrity, quality, the right tools and parts for the job, and doing the job right the first time every time are all number one on this channel, and I will stick to that. As I just said, a f engine flood typically means an excessive amount of fuel dumped into the engine. What a flood clear mode is, is that this accelerator here, you put it all the way to the floor, or you can use an object to cleverly wedge down your accelerator. And of course, with the accelerator wedged down one way or another, you'll try to start the car. Normally, only that should happen. It should just crank and crank and crank over. How the flood clear mode works is that it works by the throttle position sensor. It detects the full throttle as you push down the accelerator before you start the engine. And when you try to start it up, all it does is disable the injectors and cause the engine to crank over. This mode should be present on all fuel-injected vehicles, at least since the early mid-80s. And with that being said, if your car does start up with the flood clear mode, then that means you do have an engine flood, and you would have to start diagnosing that, so that way it doesn't happen to you, or the effects doesn't happen to you. Now, some signs of running rough would be this check engine light. See that right there? If at any time your check engine light illuminates like this during driving, you could have a rich and or lean code, which could dump excessive fuel into the engine, flooding it out. Additionally, you could, it could also be, you could fear a vacuum leak. Of course, if the engine just starts up, like you crank it over, boom, and then dies, that could be a flooded engine also. Additionally, you could have black smoke out the tailpipe if you have a gasoline engine. So if you get any of those signs, try the flood clear mode. If it starts up, you will have to do some diagnostics or pay a shop to do some diagnostics so you can figure out what's causing your engine to flood. It's a cheap, it's not cheap, but it's a, it's a free and easy diagnostic test that you can do yourself. So I would try diagnosing try the flood clear mode first before anything else as for flood clear mode diagnostics the first thing you can do is see this temperature gauge here normally within a couple of miles of driving the needle should go from usually start from C and should go all the way about right there and stabilize your entire journey it should it should warm up you know within the first couple of miles now if it does go up and now if it goes up and warms up and stays there, then you can eliminate that. But if the temperature gauge sits pretty much like where it is right now with the engine running all the time, or if it ever goes higher, then you will have to diagnose that. That could be a bad thermostat, like it's stuck open, allowing the fuel allowing the engine to stay cool. Or it could be within your engine coolant temperature sensor and or the circuitry and or the connection that could assist them um, and uh, telling why is into the computer like if the engine cooling is really at 200 but the sensor is reporting back as 150 degrees then the TCM will cause the the fuel system to dump more fuel into the engine to help compensate because it thinks it's run at 150 when it's really at 200 and it's just fine the next thing it could be like I said before is it could be a vacuum leak I showcased this hose again because this, as you remember from a video I posted a couple weeks ago, 
this hose was giving me grief and a vacuum leak. And of course I did replace it and it did throw lean codes and cause my check engine light to come on. So what you want to do is like any of these little hoses, you want to take car, again, like I said before, you take car cleaner and spray it around slowly around the entire hose. Once you hear the idle surge or it starts to stall out, you found your vacuum leak and you will need to repair that. Additionally too, if your vehicle has a mass airflow sensor, something in that could be going on could be going wrong too. Or in the case of this 90, 1997 Saturn, you have an air intake sensor and that could also be going wrong as well. Something in the connection, wiring, or the sensor itself, just like with the mass airflow sensor. However, the mass airflow sensor has one advantage over your air intake sensor. It also serves as that, but it's an air metering device. So like if it senses a full air coming from your intake, your air boxing goes all the way up into the throttle body. And if you have an air leak somewhere between here and up into the throttle body, then that could also throw off the air readings also and cause your car to run richer or lean. It could flood it out. Additionally, you could have a dirty MAF sensor. So you could try cleaning that out. I do have a video on that if you wish to clean that out. Additionally, too, see that oxygen sensor? This oxygen sensor, which usually sits as at or close to the exhaust manifold as possible, and see that just like on my grand marquee, see the oxygen sensor sits wet on the exhaust pipe, but it's near the exhaust manifold. That sensor there could be stuck, stuck or biased towards lean or rich, and that could also richen up the fuel mixture, causing a flood. And like with the case with this 1997 Saturn, this uses a return fuel system, which means there's a return pipe that returns the fuel and the vapors back into the fuel tank and it completes the fuel circuit. On most modern cars, I believe most of them after, say, 98, most of them switch over to the returnless system, which has a return line, I believe, mounted like very close to the to the fuel pump and there is no return line on your fuel rail the fuel rail is the end of the fuel system and does not make a complete loop and as a heads up 97 Saturns 91 through 97 have a return fuel system 98 through 02 however have a return list fuel system and with that being said your return hose could be pinched or otherwise blocked up thus causing the, all the fuel that would re normally go back to the fuel pump to back up into your fuel rail and go into the injectors. Additionally too, if you can see the injectors, I think there's one there, or actually there's one right there. Additionally, your injectors could be dirty, stuck, or clogged, thus causing excessively rich mixtures to be sent into your motor, so you may want to go address that too. I put the camera on the fuel filter because on those 9802 Saturns, the fuel pressure regulator sits within your fuel filter, and I'm not sure where the regulator sits on the on a return system on a Saturn for 91 through 97, but 9802, it's in your regulator, and if your regulator's gone to crap, that could either excessively lean out or richen out the mixture and you would have to see if you could address that too. Let's call this little subsection here fun with the flood clear mode. Now, as you, as you may know from uh, having the flush power steering systems on Fords and other vehicles, usually with, when you flush the power steering system, you want to have the engine cranking over while you turn the wheel back and forth full tilt several times to help flush the old fluid out of the system. So you could use the flood clear mode <clears throat> To help you with the engine crank over so you don't have to hunt for any fuses to remove. You just use the flood clear mode, turn your wheels left and right with your vehicle up in the air. And you should be able to drain all the fluid out just as easily as you would if you just disabled the fuel injectors or the fuel pump fuse and or the PCM fuse. You could also use the flood clear mode to help you when you do a compression test too. Of course you remove all the spark plugs and the spark plug wires and put your compression gauge in and then have someone hold down the accelerator and crank the engine over while you watch the compression gauge. That should make it 
com increase the compression just as good. Additionally, you could also you could also use it to prime your oil filter for the first time after an initial oil change as well. So there's a lot of other useful features to the flood clear mode than just clearing engine floods. So the next time you have a flooded engine and you're running rough or running rich and have black smoke coming out the exhaust, as that favorite YouTube guy Scotty Kilmer would say, why not fix it yourself and diagnose it too. And this has been my quick-ish tip on the flood clear mode on your fuel injected vehicle. Anyways, I'm Adventure Link sitting on my Saturn. Um, thank you all for watching. I do appreciate you taking the time out to listen to what I have to say. I hope my video was informative, interesting, and fun to watch. Please watch all my other videos if you please. Hit the subscribe button, thumbs up, thumbs down, etc. It's in the video description of each and every video on YouTube. Mine are no exception. You should know how they work by now. And we're going to close this video off as always by quoting Eric the Car Guy, reminding you guys at home to be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. And you can always hit me up in the comment section if you have any questions, comments, concerns, praise, criticisms, well wishes, prayers, etc. But keep the flames, fighting, spam, and other such bullcrap to a minimum. Since this pretty much works on every fuel injected vehicle, this will work on any vehicle as a whole with fuel injection. I don't have any real forums or general forums to shout out for vehicles, specific vehicles, but you can always visit my friend uh, Scotty Kilmer and Eric the Car Guy. You can always visit those for general car questions, I, I suppose. They're very good guys at what they do. And I'll see you all next time. Have a nice day. And it's getting to be kind of warm and humid, so make sure you all stay cool and stay hydrated and always stay healthy. Peace out.